Hey, my name's Scott Davis. I live in Bel Air, Maryland, and I'd like to share some information with you on designing the ultimate hot air collector. There are lots of solar hot air collector designs on the internet and YouTube, but which ones are really the best? Many folks will insert temperature sensors that show how hot these collectors are, which can look darn impressive, but that only tells half the tale. There are many collector designs that work well, but in some cases, if you blow more than a breath of air through them, their output temperatures might just fall like a rock. Along with temperature rise, there is another equally important variable. It is the amount of air flowing through the collector, which we usually measure in cubic feet per minute. In basic terms, if my collector is as hot as yours, but you have twice the air flowing through your collector, yours is working twice as well and producing twice as much heat. If I raise my airflow to equal yours, my temperature increase would only be half of what yours is. Both temperature rise and airflow are integral to comparing hot air collectors. This is a really important concept to keep in mind. As soon as someone tells you how hot their collector is, the very first thing you should be wondering is how much air they are flowing through it. With that backdrop, Gary of BuildItSolar.com, me, and a few other folks decided to take a close look at some common hot air collector designs do some side-by-side -side testing, and figure out which ones really work the best. I'll give you a summary of those results in just a minute. But first, what are the desirable characteristics of a high-performance hot air collector? Hot air collectors usually consist of the back, a frame, polyiso foam board insulation, the heat absorber, and clear glazing. Here are some of the desirable characteristics of a high-performance hot air collector. First of all, it's got to be easy to build with readily available materials. The frame is usually built with wood or sometimes steel stud slots. The clear glazing on the front of the collector should be inexpensive and easy to work with. Sun Tough or Tough Tex, readily available at Lowe's and Home Depot, are inexpensive, light, easy to cut with tin snips offer UV protection, are tolerant to high heat, and are quite sturdy. There are many other options as well, but they are a great choice. The insulation inside the collector should be poly-ISO, found in Sorbs Lake Home Depot, under the brand name Super Tough R. Most other types of insulation will melt inside a collector, so stick with poly-ISO. The construction steps should be simple and easily duplicated by anyone regardless of any previous DIY experience. Fortunately, there are many collector designs that are quite easy to build, and some of the best are also the easiest. Next, we need sufficient airflow to capture the heat striking the absorber. 2.5 to 3 cubic feet of air per minute per square foot of collector is a good target. That usually gets the output down to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes for a more efficient collector, because not as much heat is lost out the glazing and sides than with collectors with lower airflow running hotter temperatures. And finally, absorber design. This is the heart of the solar panel, transferring the heat of the sun striking the panel to the passing air as efficiently as possible. Heat inside the panel is going to do one of two things. It will either be transferred to the internal airflow or it will be lost, escaping out the clear glazing, sides, and back of the collector. The cooler the glazing and frame remain, the better. We want as much of the heat transferred to the airflow as possible. Not every design will meet all of these criteria, but characteristics of a good design include all areas of the absorber have good, uniform airflow to scrub the collector as efficiently as possible. No low flow hot spots where excessive heat will be lost to the glazing. Here is an infrared photo that Gary took of a back pass collector. And as you can see, this has a lot of hot spots, which 
which show up with the uh, brighter intensity colors in infrared. Even with the baffles, the air streams tends to follow close to the center. And the problem with this type of situation is that the heat at those hot spots, rather than getting pulled into the airflow, more of that radiates out the sides, out the glazing. It makes for a less efficient collector. The next desirable characteristic is that there is little or ideally no moving air at all near the glazing. Warm air inside the collector moving up near the glazing causes more heat loss through the glazing. Next, the back wall is most insulated, so heat should be concentrated there as far from the glazing as possible. The absorber should be very dark and absorb all light. Light reflected back out should be reduced to a minimum. That's lost heat, lost energy. The absorber should have a lot of heat transfer surface area for the air to rub against to pick up heat. Here are some infrared photos that Gary took of aluminum downspouts being used as heat absorbers. We have the front of the downspouts where the sun is striking them. We also have the back and what this shows is a lot of the heat that is striking the front of the downspout travels around the perimeter of the downspout to the back and then of course you have the air flowing through the downspouts so you have more than twice the surface area of a conventional back pass which is one of the reasons the downspout design works really well. The collector should be very easy to seal so there is a minimal or no outside air infiltration. And the backpass and downspout designs have a clear advantage here. The air should be as turbulent as possible within the interior airflow that will enhance heat exchange. And finally, there should be a low pressure drop, which means there shouldn't be a lot of resistance moving air through the collector. There are lots of interesting collector designs and folks are coming up with new ones all the time. Here are a couple we've had some direct experience with. The empty box, the back pass, vented soffit, multi-layer screen, and aluminum downspout. The aluminum downspout design has many of the characteristics that we just listed. It has lots of heat surface transfer area. It should be relatively easy to get a good flow of air through all the tubes with the plenum so there's no hot spots. The heat is kept well away from the glazing towards the back insulation. There's no moving air at all near the glazing. It's easy to keep air sealed since all the moving air is inside the downspouts. With enough downspouts and adequately sized plenums, the pressure drop can be kept low and it's really easy to build. So, how do we figure out which collector designs really work the best? The only reliable way to determine the performance of one collector to another is to compare them side by side under identical conditions. Comparing collectors at different locations or even the same location on different days is tough. Even on days that appear perfectly sunny, high thin clouds that are virtually invisible can vary the sun's intensity quite a bit. The outside temperature might be colder at my house than yours, and that will affect the performance a little. The collectors might be at different tilt angles or aren't quite facing the same direction, which also affects the sun's intensity striking the collector. And it might be windier at your house, pulling more heat off the glazing. All these variables make testing at different locations and comparing results a challenge. But Gary and I wanted to come up with a way for folks who are geographically separate from each other to be able to contribute with meaningful comparative data. We also wanted to have a baseline to compare various designs at our own locations on different days and inevitably different conditions. What we decided to do was to each build a baseline reference collector that is easily duplicated so that the relative performance should be identical. Other collector designs can be run against the reference standard in side-by-side -side tests with identical airflow and the primary result temperaturized being compared. In other words, if the reference standard raises the temperature 50 degrees and collector B raises the temperature 60 degrees with the same airflow, 
Collector B can be said to outperform the reference standard by 20%. We started out using a backpass design for the reference collector. It is documented in detail on builditsolar.com. The backpass works well, but we decided to change the reference standard to a double layer screen because the backpass requires a lot more pressure to move air through than other designs, making it harder to balance air flows. With our testing procedure laid out, it was then just a matter of measuring temperature rise and air flow. Measuring temperature rise, of course, is easy. All you need are sensors at the input and output of your collector under test and your reference standard. Airflow is the hard part. I could do a separate video detailing all the challenges associated with determining airflow. Be skeptical of anyone's numbers. It is a really hard thing to do. What's important is that the collectors you are comparing side by side have as close to identical airflow as possible. We used a couple different methods including the time it takes to inflate a bag, inserting an anemometer in the airflow, and actually mounting personal computer fans inside the tubes and measuring their voltage. I use both the anemometer and PC voltage fan methods here. To perform the side-by-side -side testing, I built a three-bay test collector here at the house. Gary built individual units, but he set them up side-by-side -side under identical conditions. So, which designs work best? Of the designs we've tested so far, going from worst to best, the lowest performing was the black box, followed by the back pass, and then the two best performers have been the vented soffit and fiberglass screen. What about the downspout design? Well, the performance numbers for that design look really, really good, but we don't have any side-by-side -side comparison just yet. Gary's getting ready to do some comparative testing of the downspout to our reference standard. So that's one more reason to join us on Simply Solar to see how his tests come out. Enthusiasts in other areas of interest like amateur radio or backyard astronomy have been moving to those areas of interest forward for decades. Meanwhile, solar is equally fun, it's less expensive, it pays us back many times over, it's great for the environment, and yet there are tons of opportunities for the backyard enthusiast, the school science class is yet to explore. Students could get together, build collectors as a group or individually, and race them to see which designs work best and learn from there. If this kind of thing interests you, please join us on Simply Solar. Your ideas could make a difference in a magnitude far beyond you could possibly imagine. And in the meantime, we're having a great time, and we'd love to have you part of that. So, bring it on. Challenge the downspout collector or double layer screen. See if you can beat it. If you can, we all win. Maybe a different material like garbage carbon fabric or felt will work even better. Or maybe a modification to one of the existing designs will give it a huge boost. It's up to you and me to figure this stuff out, and we're having a great time doing it. If this excites you, please join us on our email group, Simply Solar. We'd love to have you with us. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch our designing the ultimate hot air collector video today. You take care.